And Elliot Africa released its full year results the, for the period ending 31 December 2014 just this morning. Eugene Benneker, Chief Executive of Elliot Africa, joins me now for a closer look at the firm's numbers. So good to have you with us. Thanks to you, Gugu. Uh, let's pick up on the overall theme of the numbers. Your headline earnings have taken a, quite a bit of a dip, but I, I take it this is obviously attributed to the sluggish growth uh, and the economic landscape that you operate in. Well, we, we're pleased to uh, actually report a headline earnings growth of 80% from 40 cents in 2013 to 73 cents in 2014. Yeah, I read that the other way <laughs> around, clearly. So pleasingly, that was in the <laughs> right direction. So uh, a pleasing result for us, comfortably the best result in the last five or six years. It's a company that's gone through a lot of change in the last few years, and it was important for us post those changes to deliver a result in 2014 that shows the underlying health uh, of the business. Mm. Uh, we were speaking to our market commentator earlier on in the show and he said that there's clearly something happening in the building environment space because uh, we've consistently seen that yourselves and other players in the industry are managing to report fairly positive numbers. So all the noise that we hear about, you know, the sluggish growth, the power crisis and, 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 is that not impacting uh, the bottom line? You must look at the different segments in the industry. The, the DIY or cash segment of the market is definitely more buoyant than your contractor segment. The contractor mm -hmm. segment is impacted by a few macroeconomic issues and the lack of infrastructure spend in certain areas. So our result was pleasing against the context of a, a revenue line that wasn't quite where we would have liked it to be. On that revenue line, how are you hoping to change things now going forward? Well, we have a sound base. Growth is a key focus area. We approach it in three ways. Uh, organically, we will continue to invest in our brand, specifically in the Buco brand, to get that organic growth. Uh, we rolled to our two new stores in the last quarter of 2014. We'll mm -hmm. continue that process in uh, 2015. And uh, yes, we are looking for appropriate acquisition opportunities. Let's touch on the stores first. Is it difficult to find opportune land or locations for you to work on? And uh, what about the power crisis that we're experiencing? Won't that inhibit uh, some of the operations there? Yeah, it is important to get the right site, and it's not easy to get the right site. So it's a, it is a comprehensive process where at any point in time we have various feasibilities in the pipeline, but they don't all come to fruition. Um, to an extent, the uh, uh, power constraints in the country does have an impact. Um, it doesn't really inhibit our ability to trade. It's more so as an impact on our contractors to have to find ways to do the developments and the construction. You also have a lot of cash on your book compared to last year. What, sitting at 38 million last year, now it's 97 million rand. What are you planning to do with all this money? Well, we're pleased to have a, 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 no, a non-geared balance sheet. It facilitates growth into the future. Uh, so if we talk about growth and the, uh, that being a focus area for us going forward, it's pleasing to know that we have a balance sheet that can facilitate that growth. So you're talking acquisitions, clearly. We're talking new stores, organic growth, and where appropriate acquisitions. On these acquisitions, uh, are you looking to bolt on some of these, uh, especially in your drive to grow your footprint on the rest of the continent? Uh, we, we have a national footprint in South Africa. There's mm -hmm. more opportunities. We are looking at opportunities in adjacent countries. Um, nothing that we are on the verge of implementing, but yes, uh, we've widened our scope. What's making you so cautious about the rest of the continent? Well, it's, a, it's not been a, a, a key f or a core focus area for us in the past, and we believe it's very important to uh, understand those markets well and also to have the right local partners so it's not just something that comes to fruition overnight. Mm, steady as she goes quite clearly in your acquisition trail. Looking at your share price I know CEOs uh, often uh, always want to say good things about their share price and in your case you can because it's gone up by over 34 percent year to date and over the last three years as well it's on a positive trajectory. Is this aiding your attempts to instill some kind of shareholder confidence? Our, our major shareholders have been very good to us over the last few years. Of course, it's pleasing to see these share price trends. Ultimately, we do the things that we believe is right for the business on the long term, and the share price will, will speak for itself over time. Exactly. Thank you so much for your time today, and uh, a pleasure having you in. Posting improved results there. That was uh, Eugene Benneker, the Chief Executive of Iliad Africa.